All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, sis of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. I want to talk about how people are dying today. You know, people are literally, um, there is physical death, but then there is also a spiritual death as well. And that's the one thing that we need to understand is a spiritual death because a lot of people, a lot of people just assume, and this is the deception of it, just because there's breath in your body and you're living and breathing and stuff, uh, that you actually cannot die spiritually. Um, and you can. As a matter of fact, the Bible even says you can be twice dead and plucked up by the roots. And there's a character and a nature that goes along with it as well. In the generation that we're living in, do you notice how increasingly difficult it is becoming and how offended people become whenever you correct them? They could be totally wrong, out of order, and they even, the, the when you correct someone who is rebellious, uh, who who do who want to do things their way, they get literally offended. I mean, to the point that uh, they will you will see the anger and hatred that will come out of them. All the hypocrisy, you know this this so called uh, "I love you, you love me" and stuff like that. And and I know that in this world that there are just some people that it's just difficult to get along with. That, that's just the way that it is. And there are people you just don't like, but that's not in the kingdom. Um, you know, we are a tribal people. Um, and, and, and as a tribal people, you know, we're supposed to be able to help take care of each other, but man, you know, when it's hard to be corrected, when people are hard to be corrected because they feel like they don't have the right to be corrected by certain people, you know, correction, uh, doesn't have an age, uh, what's right is right. And, uh, and I think that, uh, the pride of man is just so lifted up in this generation that humility is actually become all but a cuss word in our society right here. Because before honor, there's, you know, uh, you have to be humble. There must be humility. As a matter of fact, um, uh, the scriptures teach, the greater that thou art, if you especially, if you esteem yourself to be something great, it says the more humble you should be. Um, and I know that if you, I, hey, all the time I'm talking to a generation that just simply will not submit to biblical principles, but they expect for you to tolerate them in their rebellion. They expect for you to tolerate them while they walk out their book of the law in front of you and acting and posing as if they are Israelites or saints of the Most High Yah. Uh, that's the reason why I, I say over and over again, you really need to know that Bible. You need to know it because if you know it, you will know the character and nature of all men starting with you first. Um, but the proverb said, correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way and he that hateth reproof shall die. Um, and you know, today, no matter how right the correction is, there's just certain people we can't receive it from because of an offense that is deep down in our hearts. And um, and I'm watching a lot of things take place today. A lot of times, you know, you have to be very careful to what you allow in these ears because a lot of times you can go around and be offended at someone based on what other people have said. And I'm telling you, I have personally been doing this so long that people are not getting past me. I can tell how the way people respond and the way people react. How that they have received an offense against someone that has done nothing to them based on how they act towards them. And a lot of time, there's communication, a great amount of communication that takes place when people are silent or there's no action at all. So how can you do good to all men, especially they are the household of faith, when you are offended and you're withholding good? See, this, you, you know, in this world, we're not as wise as we think we are. That's why it takes a discerning heart and discerning mind. Some of you out there, you do things uh, deceptive because you still got one foot in the world and one foot in the camp. And you have this deceptive nature about you and, and you have plans in your mind. And you, you, you're going to carry them out and you don't think that the people that you're surrounding yourself by, especially if you're going to be an Israelite, you don't think that they have any spiritual discernment to see you or know you. Boy, you're sadly mistaken. You're really sadly mistaken. But I want you all to pay attention uh, because if you're supposed to do good to all men, and we are, and especially they are household of faith, people in the faith, when they have troubles and issues against someone or somebody, they go spit in the air 
And the reason why they're spinning in other people's ears is because they want them to be offended and they want them to fight their battles for them rather than them actually doing what the Bible says. You know, the, the Bible says if, if your brother or your sister, if a brother trespass against you, you go to him and him alone. We are such stage playing hypocrites in this generation that is just unreal, the character and nature we possess. We get offended in someone, we go tell somebody else why we're offended, and then we cause that person to get offended, and that person ain't, ain't had a dog in the race. And next thing you know, this person can pick up. People are discerning. You can tell when somebody is offended against you and you ain't done them no wrong. It's just a sad, sad shame. And all this evil is working and flying under the radar, I'm telling you. There's only going to be few in the kingdom. Um, and, and a lot of these assemblies out there, you probably be better off getting thin, um, calling out this, 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 this flying under the radar rebellion and doing well with just a few than having a house full of people and all this hell is going on. I'm telling you, you don't, life is entirely too short to put up with people who will not submit to biblical terms. You can give them a little amount of time. Give them a little amount of time. But I know one thing. I know one thing for sure. Here straightway, I am stamping out all residue, all resistance, and all rebellion. Period. Especially even if it's in me myself. It's going. It's going. Because we're about God's kingdom. And this is not a self-serving Ministry. This is a ministry of servant being servants to the saints. It's not about you. It's about him. And that's just the way it is. Um, but, but I'm and then you can't even talk to people today because of the way that they process thought. You try to tell them something, they got something spitting in their ear, a little spirit telling them the very opposite of what you're telling them because they are offended. Listen to me. When you are offended, you hear a certain way, which if you were not offended, you could hear clearly what the intent is and have a very good nature with it. That's why you have to be careful who you listen to. I mean, really who you listen to. And, um, you know, it's inevitable the way life goes. I mean, uh, my, my, myself, um, I've had no trouble and no problem putting away family members out of my life for the rest of my life. I mean, after you give people many, many chances, that a leopard cannot change his spots. And an Ethiopian cannot change his color. And there are some people that they are children fitted for destructions. There are some people who are sons of perdition. And there are some people that they are just venomous vipers, serpents. And you just need, if you don't, Make decisions and choices and move in your life. You're going to continually be taken advantage of because that's what people do in this life right here. Um, they love taking advantage of people. Uh, they love seeing what they can get out of it. You know, I, around here, I'll show you what a true heart is. I, I tell the brother and all the time, there's plenty to do on this land. There, there's never not a thing that you, you cannot find to do on this land. But you watch it. When it comes to something that pertains to them personally, or their household personally, or if it's time for them to go on a trip personally, or do something other than, than has to do with the community, you ought to see the power, the energy, the enthusiasm, um, um, the zeal, um, the effort. Um, no stone is left unturned. Discernment is up to its heightened power. I mean, nothing is left out. Every detail is covered. Oh, they work their hands to the bone. But when it comes time to do something for the community, all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's nonchalant. It's dragged out. Um, uh, we just throw stuff around and carry on. This is human nature. That's why you have to have laws. You have to have laws. Um, and, of course, it's easy to live out there in your own little old family, your own little house. But I tell you what, crap is going to hit the fan. And, and, and I'm telling you right now, a lot of you people, because you refuse to change your mind, don't think that you're coming the straight way because you're not. You're simply not. And especially those who you don't support me, don't support me in this cause and walk, you can forget about it. There are people who support me, yet they have things they have to take care of. Um, and, and, and I love them very dearly. They are welcome to come. Yes, they are too. Because as the old saying go in the world, put your money where your mouth is. And most people can't do that. I'm telling you. 
When people are withholding good from you, when it's due to them, you are knowing the communication in hearts of all men. It's easy for people to come to our house and tell us the way they think things should be because they wouldn't do it at their house. But the one thing they forget is that they're not at their house. They're at our house. And we have ways that we do things. And you're supposed to honor people. I have a custom. You come to my house, you will take your shoes off before you come into my home. Yeah, you will. You will take them off. You will meet at the door. You will take them off. Now, you have a choice and decision to make from there. You can either honor and respect me, or you can rebel, dissent, and deny my commandment. Uh, which it won't go well with you because it, I only have a few people that are actually actually exempt from taking their shoes off. And unless I personally say you can keep your shoes on, you better take the things off because if you come in my house, you ain't got nothing but one, maybe two times to defy that order, that law, because it's my house. Before you will never step foot in my house again. Do you understand? And I know that many people, you used to people making concessions for you out there in your rebellion. You used to American bending over for you. But you know, it's amazing when you go get a job, you do everything that they tell you to because of a paycheck. But we have lost all honor in this country right here. Just literally our honor. Same way, when you come to this land, there's laws. We have laws. We have commandments. We, we have ways that we do things. You should respect us because I would not dare go to your home, dishonor, or disrespect you. Never. I will, never, I will obey your laws. Now, if you are doing something or you're living some sort, sort, uh, sort of way or you got idols all in your home or something, I see, uh, and, and, and there's no change after a period of time, something like, hey, I won't be coming. I, I won't be coming. There are people, homes I don't go to. I don't, I'm literally, and I won't go to. Um, just the other day, I had somebody invite me um, um, to their home and stuff, and I'm not going there. I'm not literally going there because um, I, I don't want to see his wife run around in a two-piece bikini showing me her, her um, breasts and her ass. I, I don't want to see that. I literally don't want to see that because I don't want my, I'm a man. I don't want my mind start having vain imaginations and, and, and seeing this woman who is running around basically in panties and drawers, you can dress it up, call it bathing suit all you want. And I don't want to be lusting after somebody else's wife committing adultery in my heart. So to make sure I keep myself clear, I just don't go there. I don't go there um, because I want to guard my heart with all diligence. I want to guard my spirit. And I'm sorry if you don't like my commitment, um, but I am going to protect my soul against the enemy of my soul. That's just the way it is. Most people don't think like that. Most people, they, they'll see somebody, they have a pool and stuff, and they, they can tell somebody's wives, or, or they're going to be over at a swimming pool, or they skinny dipping, they got bras and panties on. They'll go over there and smile while they're lusting after you the whole time. And you stupid women out there, you damn stupid women out there, you stupid as hell. Your body's designed for only your husband to see, but you're going to put it on display for the whole world to see and then tell them don't look. That is a chaotic insanity. That is chaotic insanity. That is a wicked, perverted mindset. And boy, I told you, hell have not, hey, hell have to enlarge in itself to receive a lot of soul. And a lot of you women, uh, uh, hell, there's already, just by the laws of nature, more women and men in history, period. So therefore, hell will be full of women. Um, and it's going to be all about full of a whole bunch of them, too. A whole bunch of them. Um, but that person, they still, that, that brother Dow, can't, why, can't you, why don't you just come on over? No, nah, brother, that's all right. I don't, I don't give no reason. But, you know, you, you would think that he would figure out the reason why I wouldn't get no reason. Huh? I mean, after I'm sitting up here talking with him, I'm talking with his wife, her breasts and chest is hanging out all over the place. No, I'm not going to come over to your house, brother. I'm not going to come over to your house. Um, because again, I, I need to guard myself. I am a man. Well, you should be more righteous. Oh, I am righteous. That's why I'm staying away. But I'm still a man. And whether you like it or not, you can be holy all the hell you want to be. You can sit up and act like that you pious, like the Pope, all the hell you want to be. But if you're a man and a woman has her titties hanging out all over the place and her ass sitting in front of you, you're going to look. There's something in the spirit, in, in the man, that makes his head want to yeah, that's the reason why I guard myself from going to certain places. That's why when I when I have to go out and get building materials, I usually try to head out early in the morning when there's very little traffic 
um, outside, and I know that I try to, I try to, I try to always do that. I try my best to do things in the, um, because I'm not naive, and neither am I privily to the nature of man. I, there's just all there's to it. There's just all there is to it. I mean, maybe, maybe in order for me to get people to see this, since people refuse to change their mind, maybe the next time that you come here and you want to come over to my house and you have your wife to come in, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I do in order to get you to see it. I'll have on just my underwear. That way she can... Just she can let her imagination run all wild because after all, if her wicked heart was right, um, she wouldn't be lusting, and you wouldn't have any problem with it. That way, she can see my chest, see my body, and and see what I have down in my birthday seat suit. And I'll have underwear on, but I won't leave nothing to chance for as imagination goes. Would that be all right with you? See, most of you, you can't get anything unless it's turned around and put. In your court. Now the truth is. I'm not going to run around on display. When people come to my house. Uh, my First thing my wife does. Is go grab a head covering. And put it on if she knows there's a male at the door. First thing she does. And 99.9% of .9 the chance. You come to the house. I'm the one who's usually answering. Unless it's, it's, it's people on the community. Um, but I'm not going to put myself on display. But if I follow the same line. And thinking that many of you people do. Maybe I should just run around in some flip flops. And wear me some speedos, and, and and just because I'm not ashamed of my body, not at all. I am literally not ashamed of it. Even at this old age that I'm at right now, I'm in pretty damn good shape and look pretty good with my shirt off. And my wife would tell you that, and she don't want everybody looking at her husband and stuff. But that's the attitude and philosophy that some of you people got, and you can't get it unless you bring your wife over here and just let her say, "I'll just sit up there in the living room." Have my legs all crossed up, or, or, or uh, hey, that's what you do at swimming pool, wouldn't it? I just lay on out there and stuff, and um, and I'm telling you, it's gonna be very dang difficult for your wife to keep her eyes off of me. That's just the truth. That's just human nature. So should I not be responsible enough to know better? Should I should, should I, I should cover? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? I mean, you don't want me to come out. Hey, I don't. Don't they wear uh, underwear to the beach? Men do. That's all they have on. It's just a lust fest. All right? Wisdom is too high for a fool. But I tell you what, this generation has done something to our hearts and our minds. Literally has done something to our hearts and minds. And, and, and don't fool yourself. Women love looking at good looking men and their bodies just like men love looking at women because it is a natural. It's a natural draw. I don't care how much Holy Spirit you have. I don't care how much tongues you speak in and how many commandments you keep. That is just a fact. You can act stupid if you want. People dress certain ways. They look certain ways because they are luring through the flesh. They want attention. Be it positive or negative attention, whatever they can get, they want it. They want eyes on them. That's why I dress like this all covered up. I don't want no eyes on me. That's why when I preach and teach, you see me wearing these big old gigantic garments. I want them to pay attention to the message, not me. I know I've offended a lot of people. I know I have. I know I have. And let's just think about it. Let's say you're a husband, you're a big old fat husband, and your wife is, is pretty decent and in shape and stuff. You come over to the house and here's Pastor Dow, I'm going to come to the door and answer the door in my underwear. Now your wife, oh, she may look away and say, oh, like, come on in, come on in. I was seeking everything. It'd be all right if I run around my underwear? Hmm? Would it be all right? Because after looking at you, then turn around looking at me, boy, she going to be enticed. I promise you, thoughts are going to enter into her mind. The same way that thoughts will enter into a man's mind. If he's sitting up here saddled with this big fat ass woman, and he's in good shape, and then there's this other woman that is around and has a nice shape, she's taking care of herself. She doesn't look like no swimsuit model, but you can tell. Human nature, his spirit going to be drawn to that. So if you don't like what you see, then change it. Whoo. I think my talk is too straight for this generation. You deserve the truth, and that's the truth straight way.